Hello, I'm outside on my picnic table. This is an inverter magnet. <clears throat> well, some people call it that. Um, I think the guy that patented it, or at least this toy. Um, so you got magnet in the middle, uh, six smaller magnets around the outside. They're actually attracted to the center. They're set up so the small ones are attracted to the middle one and the small ones repel from each other. So you can normally just take a magnet like this, put a bunch around it, and then get some like uh, duct tape I used to use and make one yourself. Um, but they don't, they don't work very well trying to hold it together like that. So I went out and I got one of these manufactured things and you can just push the magnets in there. Um, but anyway, uh, what it will do is it will balance, um, this, this magnet is set up so that, um, the, the attraction, so right now it's attracted to the middle magnet, okay, so if I put it over here, okay, this is, is now still, it's attracted to the small magnet, but it's repelling from the middle one. Okay. Now, if I flip it over, now it's attracted to the large magnet, but it's repelled by the small ones. I think I got that right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but the result of that is that this magnet will be uh, balanced and it will have a horizontally balanced magnetic field. Okay. So, it goes, um, it, it'll go, it'll approach it horizontally up to a point and then it will stop. And it has these discrete locations around the outside in between each of the uh, outer nodes that have this effect but it will not balance on you know at the top of one of the um, directly to the side of one of the nodes okay but this effect only happens horizontally okay and the reason this is working right now is because it is on a flat surface if it were not on a flat surface then what this magnet actually wants to do is to go up and and become attracted to the rest of it. So it's not actually balanced. There's this thing called Earnshaw's theorem that says that you can't balance magnetic fields. Um, please don't give up on trying to invalidate that if that's your goal because, yeah, like... Just because someone says something can't be done, maybe just someone hasn't thought of the right idea yet. Okay? I mean, he says he's proven it mathematically, but there's all these other, you know, there's other things people haven't tried before. So never give up. Uh, but anyway, uh, so it's, you know, this is not magnetic locking. You're not doing anything. This is permanent magnets. You're not using any motors. Um... And so this this small magnet, they become attracted, but they stop. Well, that was a good demo. Right when they get there. Um, you can also, you can rotate it. Um, and I guess that's all I wanted to show there. Ah, let me show you, though. If I go up over an imperfection in this flatness here, it is going to pop that magnet out and it's going to go and become attracted to the top. So you might think, hey, oh gosh, I hate pulling magnets apart. You might think, hey, what if I got a whole bunch of these and build it up vertically and then add a stack of magnets on the side? 
something like that. Um, I don't know. I got four of them. I could try something. Um, I was also thinking of some form of, you know, of trying magnetic locking with one of these and seeing if that made the process easier where you rotate the disc. Ow. Where you rotate the disc, um, I guess, you know, in a circle like a top. Oops. You rotate the disc this way, and then you have a spinning magnetic field, and it would make it more stable so that so that the mag the other magnet on the side of it, um, it would have a more stable location and orientation so it wouldn't be att as attracted to the to get pulled to the sides so if you had this this center black piece rotating on the end of like a dremel like you see for magnetic locking experiments um yeah it might be it might be easier to get the the other magnet to lock in place on the side of it or in one of, in one of the node locations um, but currently, yeah, I don't have any additional ideas to violate Ernshaw's theorem. But I thought I'd share this with you. They are kind of expensive. I think this was from Science Direct, and I couldn't find it anywhere else. So that's where I purchased these from. I'm sure there are 3D printed models you can download for free, but yeah, the quality of the plastic. Um, it's probably annoying to use if you do that. Alright, have a good day, bye.